Hey you guys! Um, hello, introduction to art. Um, I have a feeling like not too many people understood the assignment last week, the mandala assignment. But I want to break it down to you and show you a little bit about how I started and, um, you know, write down any questions you have in the chat, okay? Um, and only one person turned in the assignment so far, so yikes. Okay, well, um, the first part, um, the first activity, I was going to have you start a gratitude journal, and I kind of started mine today. I mean, not today, the other day, because I had kind of forgotten about it. But um, I wanted you to date um, from the last meeting, which was 4.14 or 4.15, depending on what period you're in, and each day to write down five things that you're grateful for. Um, for example, on April, well, here's the dates, 4.14, the 15th, the 16th, the 17th, and on down to the 28th, because I was going to have you do this for two weeks. Um, and then... Um, okay, so for example, on the 16th, I wrote the things that I was grateful for was YouTube, because we're doing this on YouTube right now, walking my dog, Eva, and my imagination and art, things that I'm grateful for. Another day, I put the sun, because it was a sunny day, cashew nuts, painting, and ALC teachers. And I think I put ALC students on the first one. Um, okay. And then today I'm grateful for my son, Faustino, because he's helping me do this. Um, I'm thankful for, I guess, Zoom, because <laughs> we can stay in communication. And um, sitting in my studio... in a little one-car garage in Echo Park. And um, can't think of anything. How about, I really love bananas. Bananas. And one more thing. Um, I can't think of anything right now. Okay. Um, so anyway, um, later, you don't have to do this now, but I had this area over here where maybe you could create some symbols that are based on the things that you're grateful for. For example, when I put walking my dog or walking and then my dog Eva, I put some little footsteps. This other day, I, you know, I said I was grateful for the sun, just like a sunny day, the sun on your face. I put a sun there. Um, I'm really into this book right now, so I wrote a book. I drew a little book. So these are areas where you could um, make a little symbol of something you're grateful for. And these could possibly be used in your mandala. Okay, now I'm going to turn the page and show you the other things. I kind of started. The first one, the second activity after the, the gratitude journal was the first activity. But the second activity was 10 natural shapes. And those were going to be based on some photos that you took. So first of all, I'm going to show you the photos I took the other day. Let me know if you can see these okay. Just hold them right Ooh, there. Oh, my password. Okay, so right here. Okay, just saw this. Mm-hmm. Okay. I really liked that one, so I started trying to draw that one here. Um, some leaves. This one I drew here. Okay. This one, I really like that red flower. I tried to draw it here. I've done a little bit better job. I was drawing with black pen because I really didn't want to, you know, concentrate on erasing. I just wanted to draw the ideas out first. This one, I really love the pattern that all these tiny little flowers made. And I was trying to draw that sort of pattern here. Okay. 
um, cactus. These are just little branches up against the sky. I think clouds could make an interesting um, natural shape. Another flower. Okay, this is another one. So I just asked you guys to do 10 photos of things that you see, like just take a walk around the neighborhood. Of course, with your mask on, covering your nose and your mouth. But um, just to go on a little photo hunt. Also, really try to get your photos close up because you can really see the, the beauty and the design in nature. Um, that's something else. Okay, I was going to do a pattern thing. Okay. So based on these photos, I started drawing these. Now, um, practice drawings are just what I mean. Like, I'm not gonna draw it perfectly the first time, but so that one flower that I saw, this was my first attempt at it. And it, it's really ugly, huh? Like, sometimes that's what a sketchbook's for making ugly drawings. Okay, so anyway, I then I tried to draw it a second time. Maybe getting it a little more, I don't know, closer. I noticed this little piece coming out here. It was kind of cool. And then this. Then I tried to I draw sort of like a grid because later you guys are going to be drawing a grid for your mandala. So I was trying to make it a little more symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, this was that other leaf that I was kind of interested in the way the veins were growing out and it was kind of a beautiful sort of round shape. I like that shape. Um, the other thing is, um, you remember way back at the beginning in September when we were drawing like forms, um, I was noticing that this one flower had kind of a cone shaped form. So I sort of traced a cone and then tried to draw the flower inside of it and again these drawings are just practice um, also something to notice I, I kind of made some spirals here um, maybe I'll try to put a little clip of YouTube um, have you ever seen a plant growing in slow motion um, the plants grow in a spiral towards the sun, so they're always um, kind of turning like this, and I tried to get that little spiral into that drawing. Um, and, yeah, so kind of when you look at a, a flower or any kind of plant or form, maybe see what its main um, shape is all about. Okay. Um, all right, so then I didn't finish here. I said to draw 10 natural shapes, and I counted this one as one because I was kept trying to draw it. So this is one, two. I drew my son's hair because I just like it. Hair is a natural object. Um, and three, four. I guess I just did four of them now. Okay, so I'll, I have room to draw a little bit more. Okay, um, the, the second activity was to find 10 geometric shapes. And you'll see in the PowerPoint that I had some ideas for the geometric shapes. Those were pretty basic. And I don't know, I just thought I would get mine a little more, I don't know, creative or different. I guess this is based on a diamond, but I kind of curved the sides a little bit. I guess this is more of a vertically shaped diamond. This one is a little more horizontal of a diamond. And again, sometimes I draw really light lines on the paper so I can kind of line things up. Um, if you guys have a ruler, you can you can actually make a grid like that. Also, I really, do, as far as the paper that you're drawing on, I know some of you guys forgot your sketchbooks at home. I mean, not at home, because you would have them. You forgot your sketchbook in your locker. And um, so feel free to draw on regular notebook paper like this. Yeah, um, okay, let me get to the next part. Anyway, 10 geometric shapes. The next part is where you're actually going to start. You're going to get a piece of notebook paper, 
and maybe glue it. Well, first of all, don't glue it in yet. <laughs> um, this is how I got this on a regular piece of notebook paper. First, I got a regular piece of notebook paper, but I kind of want to get rid of this holes and stuff in this line. So I just cut on that little red line like that. Okay. And then, you know me, I hate measuring, but um, if you want to see the width of this is now a, a little bit more than seven inches, okay? But we could um, actually get an exact measurement by, because I'm trying to make a square. Remember we said that mandalas are basically a square with a circle on the inside. So I'm going to fold this back and I'm going to have this same length right here. And I'm going to kind of do this. I'm going to measure using this. Wait, I think I want to go down here. So that because I don't want that white piece at the top, the margin at the top. I'm going to use that. I'm going to make a little line. So now hopefully I'll have a square. Let's see. Okay, that kind of looks like a square, right? It's better than the one I did. Okay, so that's how you can take a piece of notebook paper and make a square and leave all those red lines and stuff on the other side and cut off the hole. So you, by this, you'll almost have a piece of graph paper. But if you have a piece of graph paper, that's even better. Get a piece of graph paper. But you're gonna have to also make a square out of the graph paper. Now I'm gonna cut this here. Okay, so basically you guys are going to need um, notebook paper, maybe a ruler, maybe not, um, a pencil, an eraser. Um, okay, now this only has horizontal lines. How am I going to make the other type? This is what I did. I folded it in half. One. Two, three, four. I think four times is good. Okay, so I folded it in half four times. The square ended up about that big. Now I'm going to open it up. Okay, and now is when you can glue it down. You can glue it down. Um, if you guys have glue, I don't know, I hope you have glue. Um, I guess you could use tape. All right. Um, staples are kind of icky, but anyway. Um, but anyway, I glued this little paper down onto another paper. Like if you have another piece of paper, you could glue it down. And so then, um, especially glue it into your sketchbook because then you won't lose it. It's kind of, that could get lost, I guess. So it's good to keep everything in the sketchbook. Okay, um, well now I have vertical lines as well as horizontal lines. The first thing to do when you're starting a mandala, you know that everything emanates out of the center. So I'm gonna identify where the center is by just making a little mark in the center. I'm gonna start off with one shape that I'm gonna make around the center. Um, okay, let me just switch to this one. Um, I also drew the, the grid lines really lightly. Later I can go and erase those if I want to. But anyway, here I found the center and for this particular one I decided to make a diamond around the center. And then, so now I'm gonna start using some shapes from my natural shapes and my geometric shapes to create this mandala. Maybe I'll do, um, you know, for example, that flower. Okay, I should be using a pencil. Use a pencil first, you know why? You can make changes. And so, um, okay, this is gonna turn out really crappy because you guys are watching, but I'm gonna try to make my first, okay, that still <laughs> doesn't look like it. Um, Okay, you know what? Another thing you can do is you can draw the shape 
and another, you know what? If you don't have any paper on, you can get an envelope. You could draw, I'm going to draw something really lame and bad just because I'm kind of in a hurry. But anyway, you can draw your shape. You can then cut it out. Okay. Uh, pretend like I'm doing a good job. Okay, let's just say that's my shape. I didn't work on it very hard. Okay, so then I could place it down. This is just a cutout shape. Place it down and I could trace around it. Okay, and just use it as a pattern to trace around. So every time, okay, every time I make a shape, it's um, the same. Pretend like I traced it a bunch of times. I should have one before. Okay. Um, the other thing about that I was trying to explain is that um, you want to start in the center, make a shape, and then the next shape you make, have it connect or touch to the center, pretending that these are all the same. And then the next shape you make, connect it to those. Maybe I'll make, hmm, maybe I'll make this really kind of taller diamond, or should I make a square? Um, but maybe I'll connect up these two that way and these two this way. And then I'll do the same thing on this side. And the same thing on this side. What would have been better <laughs> is if I measured out from here, it looks like it's like two and a quarter inches. So then I end my shape two and a quarter inches on every side, or however many inches. So every shape is connected and then I just keep adding shapes till I get out to the edges. Okay, um, let me please write your questions in the chat and I will look forward to reading your questions. Thank you. Bye for now.